Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I know the next one is we are going for a lunch, but I'll make more interesting. Don't worry about it. I'm Bhuminathan, and thank you for the quick introduction, Ron. Right. So currently, I'm helping as a Cisco multi-cloud architecture market multi-cloud, regional multi-cloud architect, helping Cisco solutions on hyperscalers like AWS, Azure, and GCP. So what is the experience I'm bringing here, right? I have nearly like a two decades of experience. Uh, maybe like a 12 years before, I did a cloud, meaning when AWS saying auto-scaling EC2, by the time itself, I did a project. So that's my uh, one of the biggest advantage. So I did like a lot of uh, cloud migrations and cloud modernization and app modernization. These are the things. So apart from my current role, what I'm doing is I'm also doing a lot of organizing, a lot of community, and also talking a lot of the global conference. For an example, yesterday I was part of API days delivering the talk and also the Kubernetes user community. So I love one thing about myself is I am curious to learn and share the knowledge. That's about me. Uh, and apart from the technology, I also do mentoring. If you guys need any mentoring, I if to take like a walk, you can connect with me. And this is my LinkedIn. At any time, you can connect with me. And I have certified in multi-cloud. Uh, well, that's it. Okay. Now uh, let's have let's come to the actual topic. Okay. Uh, as I told you, I want to be more interactive. Okay. How many of you guys already architected your applications? in the cloud. Awesome. So, well, maybe I wanted to ask from Ryan. So, what is the application you architected? And what are the high-level key pillars maybe you, you considered? Uh, we have an uh, ML uh, application. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. So, what are the key parameters, uh, kind of like a key pillars you consider while, while you do the architecture? Traffic. Traffic. Perfect. Okay, because it's kind of like a machine learning, compute intensive. So you, you need to be like a network, how the network intensity is there. Those port is like high bandwidth available or not. Perfect. Maybe I'll take one more question. Uh, what kind of application you architected? Is it like a data center migration or like any specific application? Contact point. So, any any key things you consider like while doing the architecture? Uh, what was the like a push? Um, what I'm asking is, what is the bis business business push and what is the technical push doing the architecture? So, Visibility of the infrastructure. Reproduce. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Got it. Immutable. Okay, awesome. Okay. Elastic. Okay, awesome. So I'll just like summarize, right? What Ryan says is Ryan focused more on performance efficiency. That's his key thing while, while doing the architecture. Whereas, uh, may I know your name, sorry? Herdy. Okay, Herdy says, more on operational excellence, how it can be like reimmutable, um, kind of like how I can do that. So for uh, sake of understanding, I'll take only AWS, how you can do the AWS architecture in any cloud. Uh, that's common for Azure or GCP or Oracle, anything. But uh, for the easy understanding, let's take the AWS. So there are like a five key things we need to make sure while doing any architecture. First thing is, as Ryan mentioned, performance efficiency. How our workload is going to deploy in the cloud and going to operate in the cloud. Because at the end of the day, we are architecting for the applications. Applications is nothing but the business outcome, right? So the business needs to run, it's, it has to be performed efficiently. So you have, that's why like you have to use, you have to select the proper compute, proper network, proper storage. If you remember the rain word, he told, it's a compute intensive application and network intensive requirement, like high GB, those kind of stuff. But if you see Hadley, he told it needs to be elastic. That's where operational excellency comes into the picture. So most of you guys come from like a DevOps or platform engineer or SRE, that's where like operational excellency, okay? The third one is, uh, maybe before, instead of I ask, I say, I want to hear from you. 
we talked about two things operational excellency performance efficiency so other than this two, two key pillars uh, anyone wanted to share any of other key pillar which you did architecture sachin you wanted to share Mm. Okay. Okay. Got it. So, such a concept is cost optimization. See, uh, so we are we are always doing the architect for the business push. So, business is always like a, what's the cost benefit? What's the cost optimization? I can do that, right? So, this is like a third pillar, cost optimization. How do we do the cost optimization? So, that's where we have to use the latest on example where our infrastructure is running more on the compute instance. So we need to use the latest one. Then we have to use more kind of like a latest uh, technologies like a cloud native uh, kind of containers or serverless, those kind of stuff. So you guys only share three key pillars, performance efficiency, uh, operational excellency, cost optimization. Any, uh, I, I told you like a five key pillars in the in architecting anything and I wanted to be more interactive. There are two things remaining. Anyone wants to touch base? Just think from your own experience. What 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 does it matter for your organization? What does it matter for your customer while architecting any application? SLA, that's good. Cool. Exactly. That's a fourth thing. Security. Because why we are consider if we are architecting an application, if the application or is not secured end to end, how our customer can deploy that, okay? Or like how we can deploy our BFSI or like a banking applications on the cloud. So security is the key pillar, okay? Uh, this is the fourth one. The last one is, oh, okay, the last one is, okay, before I complete the uh, last, okay, the last one is reliability. Okay, what is reliability? See, I'm talking now, they are connecting all the ways, like uh, in person, also online. Reliable, right? Like uh, if I'm, if anything, if you guys missed it here, some of the people can hear from the online also. And it's available at recording also. Reliability comes from the resiliency, okay? It has to be available all the time. And if you remember the famous quote from AWS CTO, Werner Works, everything fails all the time, okay? So the reliability. So let me summarize what are the five things, okay? Reliability, performance efficiency, Operational excellency, cost optimization, and security. You guys got it, right? Now let's come back to the architecture. Okay, so this is like a sample of. There are like I'm going to introduce five patterns, but let's quickly take the uh, pattern number one. Pattern number one focuses on. Uh, let's take like a normal from web application. When you are designing the web application, if you think whatever the five key pillars I told, it will be there. So we are choosing the compute and also we are here in the one of the availability zone. So what is availability zone in AWS is, it's more kind of group of data center in a spe specific location. So in the data, what is the data center? That's where the applications will be hosted, where the compute, network, storage, security, infrastructure, virtual life, everything will be there. So availability zone is nothing but there could be multiple data centers, okay? And uh, in AWS, there is a concept called region. Region is nothing but it's a group of availability zone. Maybe one, uh, one, two, three availability zone. In one availability zone, how many data center will be there? Minimum of two to four. Okay, that's that's the things. If you see here, we have an EC2 instance uh, in one availability zone, and we have an EC2 instance and another availability zone also. On top of that, so that's where like our application is residing. On top of that, we have a load balancer. Okay, what what it is like this architecture? We are deploying the application, compute intensive application. If anything happens on AZ1, so when I say AZ1, it's availability zone one. So we have a traffic distributed to AZ2 also. It could be like active passive or like a load sharing. Both of them is available. Let's see the pattern two. So if you guys see in the pa pattern one, it's more kind of single instance, okay? One EC2 instance in the availability zone and another EC2 instance in availability zone. It's more kind of like monolithic applications. How many of you guys already working on microservices architecture? That's a de facto standard, right? It's becoming, so let's consider those kind of 
microservices, okay, compute like cloud native. If you see here, we have, we have like a group of instance. What is the benefit of cloud native instance, right? As hardly correctly mentioned, elasticity. We can easily reproduce and within a nanoseconds, we can easily build it, okay? So with, with that, we have a group of instances. One vulnerability zone, if it gets files, we can take it another another things. So it keeps on doing that. So the third one is where the region comes into the picture. If you see the user is there, they have like a web application in one region and mobile application, kind of like a mobile app in another region. So what does that mean? Uh, if you have, if you take like a three-tier architecture, web can be, we can use in one region, app can be, we can use in the another region also. It based on the design. But what is the key, key outcome here, right? You can distribute the traffic accordingly. Most of the times, like a global traffic, that's why like AWS has the CDN and Route 53, we can have the global network traffic. From there, we can route or oh, this kind of traffic uh, to this web layer. Consider an example. Uh, if you're accessing Amazon.com USD, those kind of traffics loaded, located to like Singapore data center. If you're opening Amazon.com dot, dot, dot in, it goes to India data center. That, those kind of designs. Okay? And those entire database also. That's what I wanted to try. The customer database also located based on the region. This is more based on the uh, application requirement. Okay? This is the fourth and final. I know like I'm going a little fast because of running out of time. Uh, but what I wanted to make sure is the five key pillars you need to remember, operational excellency, performance efficiency, cost optimization, security, and reliability. And you know how, how it is. And whatever we are talking, it's more focused on reliability and scalability, okay? So let's take a last one. Uh, this is like, uh, I, I explain about region, right? By saying that, what is the one thing come to your mind related to application? Do you see like this application is active, active anytime. SLA Ryan mentioned, right? Here, we are able to achieve the SLG. Because it's kind of like active, active. Uh, we have like a group of applications in code, code, code considered like a code banking in availability zone A. Same thing available for availability zone, uh, zone two also. And across the region also. What is the region? So Singapore is considered as one of the region. Under one of the region, we have like multiple availability zone. Under one availability zone, we have multiple data centers. Same Singapore, we can have a Sydney. Sydney is another region. And we can have one more region in India, Bangalore or Hyderabad. That's another region, or like US. Okay, that's how we can scale the architecture. So with the interest of time, I wanted to take a couple more minutes to answer the, to take out the questions. Yeah, thanks a lot. We have about uh, three minutes for questions. So maybe two questions. And I'll be there. If you have more questions, I'll be roaming here. I'm happy to uh, explain you. So now you guys, uh, yeah, please, please go ahead. Yes. Okay, whatever I talked about is more focused on scalability, but uh, and as part of the reliability, right? But uh, not reliability. In security, is release everything. For example, defense in depth. Whatever I'm doing, like for example here, it's more focused on the compute, right? You need to, whatever the data resides in the compute has to be encrypted, data in transit. Uh, sorry, data in rest, data in transit has to be encrypted. Along with that, we need to include the zero trust model also. Who is accessing, what is the authorization, and what is the authentication, everything. So that's a key thing. Also, we need to do defense in depth towards the cloud, inside the cloud, and outside of the cloud, okay? So this is more focused on reliability pillar. Any questions? And thank you for asking. I appreciate it. So you guys got it. Like, how do we scale step by step? You, you see, like from one availability zone, one data center, one instance, and then compute instance, and cloud native, and multiple region. So that's how like we we scale the things. And I think I'm I'm running out of time. Uh, next is lunch, right? Okay, we have one more speaker. Okay, perfect. So I'll be there. If you have any questions related to that, you can connect. Uh, you can ask me. In the meantime, this is my LinkedIn. You can connect, and uh, we can explore. We can exchange the things. If you have any questions, oh, one more minute, right? Oh, under, okay. Maybe I can wait for one more minute until the speaker comes. I love to hear any questions, please. Okay. Resiliency. You already answered the question.
Correct. Yeah, yeah. That's a very good question. Maybe let me summarize. So, what is the need for multi-cloud in terms of resiliency? Because resiliency can be achieved with a single cloud provider with the help of multiple regions. That's correct, right? Okay. Multi-cloud push not only come from the application, it always come from the organization. Why? Because there are two business benefits. One business benefit is consider I am a, I am a customer. You are a you are a cloud A and you are a cloud B. I can negotiate both of them, trade off. Okay. And some of the times my developers will be there. He is killed on cloud A and he is killed on cloud B. So I have the providing the democracy to the developer to flexibility to the developers. These are the two things apart from resiliency. Okay. Perfect. Sorry. When it comes to business. It, that's the first one, but it's strategically, uh, that's why like important, right? Because uh, some of the times, you know what? You, you take like one of the government organization in Malaysia, they may have, I want to store my data in specific cloud, where the data center is already in Malaysia. If you take cloud A, B, they are not there. Cloud D is there. If you take like Indonesia, Google is there, Google data center is there. So it depends on business complaints and also business application requirements. These are the three things. Along with that, in single way we are saying, calling a resiliency by adding as a part of the architecture. Okay. I hope like I answered all the questions. Please feel free to reach out to me anytime.